Hello. Um, today's subject is Will Slavery Ever End? And I know that um, when a lot of people think about slavery, they think about the slavery of Africans um, in this country and in the West Indies and other areas. And while that is, I guess, um, I guess the popular idea of slavery, I'm not talking about that kind of slavery. Um, I'm talking about the mentality that created that slavery. And I think that that mentality is a mentality where we don't value ourselves, a mentality where we don't value others, and a mentality where we don't value the work that goes into everything that is. We don't value the creation that we're all a part of. I don't know if you guys know this, some of you may know this, uh, when I decided to be a minister, I was actually working as a recruiter for companies, recruiting engineers and scientists and all types of people, um, primarily in technology. And it was a tough time for a lot of those people because people who were making 100000 120000 150000 a year, sometimes I recruited. The most I ever recruited for somebody was making 400000 a year. And how do you say this? Well, the job market started to go down and a lot of people started losing their jobs. And people who used to be of high value according to um, the market, the job market, started to lose their jobs, really good people. And uh, they started calling me and they would say, oh, is there anything, is there people who I called before but were like, I'm all set because they had good jobs and were making good money, all of a sudden they were on the job market. And they were calling me, asking me if I could help them. And I was trying, but I started learning from a lot of people just how much suffering they were going through. And I'm sitting there thinking, wow, this person, I had a person say, I can't feed my family off $100,000. And at first I laughed at it because I feed mine off less. But then I started to think about it from his perspective. And I'm not saying I feel sorry for people who make $100,000 or whatever. That's not even my business. But I started realizing that how hurt this person was because he had invested so much of his time into a company that let him go. He had built a life around making a certain amount of money, feeling like he was proud of himself. Because he had his job that was making all this money. And once he lost it, he had nothing. And even though he had money still in the bank and things like that, it was going away. And he was scared. But he also had created a mortgage, had cars, had kids in school. And it was all based off of the salary he was used to making. And he had no idea what he was going to do with himself. And eventually, I got to a point where I said, look, I can't do anything. And I said, all I can do is pray for you. And when I said that, he actually accepted it. And then I knew I couldn't really do that at work, but I started finding that more and more people who were really stressed out, I really started saying to them, I'm sorry, but all I can really, all I can do is pray, I'm sorry. And people started calling me, asking me just to pray for them. And it's not that they, they got jobs. If I had it like that, I'd be praying for some stuff for myself. It wasn't like that. It was just the comfort of being heard, I think. And the realization once it hit them that they were kind of enslaved, a lot of them started to realize, like, I thought I was free, but I'm not free. I have a mortgage that I need to work 30 years to pay. And if I don't have a job and I lose that mortgage, it's going to mess up my credit and blah, 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 blah. And they started realizing, like, how trapped they were. And I saw that. And I started saying, man, you know, we are still enslaved. And it's not just black people and poor people. All of us, all of us who don't know the value of who we are, all of us who buy things that we can't afford in order to feel things that are being manufactured, because we're just trying to manufacture feelings when we buy things that we don't really need, all of us are enslaved to it. We start feeling like if we don't have these things, we're less than who we are, and it's not true. And I started wondering, what if we appreciated ourselves? What if we appreciated others? What if we honored the work that people do to create the things we have? But not create a situation or continue to create a situation where we constantly need to be fed. Because we are addicts. It's hard. You don't want to hear it. But if you've ever been around a drug addict and then you look at the way we are in our society with the more, 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 we're addicted. We are addicted bad. And the only thing that I think we can do is start appreciating ourselves and appreciating others.
I know that that might be a tough correlation and it might not make sense. And maybe sometimes or some of you don't want to hear that you are enslaved in some way. But I think that in, if we're going to do anything about it, people do have to start saying it. And so that's what I'm saying. It's not to put anybody down. It's not to make us feel bad. It's just to get us to pay attention and to realize that if we're going to have this stuff, at least start with appreciation. So anyway, I'm putting that out there. I don't know if it does anything for you, but that's where I am.